Today on The Learning Gardener, I am trying to get as much as I possibly can done in the garden in one day in a very noisy neighborhood, which is why I'm doing a voiceover for this video. Where I started was tidying up my status flowers on the side of the house. These flowers have been prolific and it's been maybe two weeks since I pruned these back and there are even more blooming now. It's just been such a beautiful show through this early spring and I have lots of things planned for these status. I want to try using some epoxy resin and doing some craft projects with the straw flowers and with the status and um, with other dried flowers but I also want to start accumulating dried flowers again so come Christmas time I can potentially try again to decorate a full Christmas tree with dried flowers last time I managed half a tree and it was just so beautiful so I was delighted with my haul it doesn't matter whether they have long stems because as you go up the tree you will trim them back and it's just beautiful to have these hanging and drying all around my house now. The second thing on the list was to deal with the tree I'm now affectionately calling Crispin Glover because it became very crispy after a heat massive heat waves summer temperatures in the first week of well the last week of winter and the first week of spring and everything dried out because of the huge um, amount of wind that we had this also meant that the pots that these three pitosporum privacy trees were in um, kept being blown over and cracked and I had these spare rectangular pots and I thought well there's no way if they fit in there that they will blow over in a windstorm. This will be more of a weighted down tree. So I thought I'll transplant the two plus Crisp and Glover and see how they go. And at least then they will still provide us some privacy and hopefully they fit in the rectangle pots. As you can see, it was a little bit of a wrestle to get them in the pots, but in the end I managed and poor Crispin is still looking pretty crispy, but at least he doesn't have a wasp nest on him anymore. At the end of last season we got unseasonably cold weather in autumn followed by flooding and we had 12 weeks of just endless rain and so there were a lot of things that didn't get cleared out of the garden beds some of them being the peppers and I thought I would just leave them and see how they went and whether they came back in spring and most of them have but they do look a bit scraggly so I've been making my way around the garden beds and tidying them up I've also been topping the beds up with um, mushroom compost as I haven't been able to get the compost going fast enough and breaking down the autumn leaves that I put in the compost bins have been taking forever to break down but as ever I've got two very enthusiastic puppies with me as 
I top up the garden beds and in this case I bought some spinach um, seedlings from the nursery to get going in this bed while I wait for these green feast shelling peas to finish up so I can move this trellis and get ready for the tomatoes. The weather has just been so crazy I've had so much trouble getting seeds going finally I'm starting to have a bit more success but uh, these are trombocino um, squash that I'm trying for the first time growing up this trellis but apart from them I've really struggled to get any seedlings going I've had absolutely no luck with things like onions I've even struggled with flowers um, it's just been such a difficult season to get seeds started oddly and I've done a mix of um, direct sowing and seed trays so there are some things that I was like this is ridiculous I'm never going to get anything unless I buy something from the nursery which I've obviously been trying to avoid but in the case of the spinach it was certainly time to get some in the ground and hope that at least this would let me get some preserved up through the course of the cooler season um, I'll freeze dry some and powder it and some of it will go into the freezer so that when I make things like minestrone I have spinach ready to go at any time. These pathetic little celery and lettuce seedlings were actually started back in the middle of autumn and it is now the first month of spring and you can see how tiny they are. They have just really failed to get going at all but I thought I'd just pop them in and give them a go and if anything happens, great, if not, whatever. I also planted a few new varieties of capsicums or sweet peppers these are an heirloom mix variety and I've also planted some yellow ones because I just love yellow capsicums. They're one of my favorite ones to cook with.
getting into the orchard to remove this ornamental pear tree has been something I've been wanting to do for weeks and weeks and weeks. I did, when I planted this tree here, research the root types for this tree and felt comfortable that they were only supposed to be um, fairly superficial, but having a good look at the ornamental pear tree in my parents' backyard taught me that, no, that is in fact a dirty great big lie. And given how close it is to my um, stormwater pipes and everything, I decided to move it down the back where we were originally going to put the shed. And I just thought, well, it's here or it's in the bin because none of my friends wanted it. And so this was the only home I could find for it. I doubt it'll get enough sun, but oh well, we'll see if it survives. And in this case, thankfully, I had some happy helpers who were only too happy to help me with the digging process, which is lovely because being nearly six months pregnant, I'm not enjoying digging. And so if I can get any help along the way, I don't mind. planted this Japanese maple here and it was originally a little flower bed that obviously got very very neglected but when I planted it here the garden beds behind me and off to my side were not here and it became obvious fairly quickly when I realized I had forgotten to construct some garden beds that I was going to need to move it so when I moved the ornamental pear I popped the Japanese maple in its place and there are a few other Japanese maples in this orchard area and I'm just loving how this area has come together. It's looking so, so beautiful as everything awakens and the weather warms up. It's just looking fantastic. Behind the Japanese maple, I popped two Isabella hydrangeas and I just had to pull up some of the cardboard I'd laid down a few months earlier just to be able to dig a tiny hole to pop the hydrangeas in. This eucalyptus pot has just been sitting here until I decided what to do with it and all I'm going to do is roll it into the orchard into a slightly different spot because I want to make this garden bed a, a little bit wider just so I can pop the um, lupin cherry tree in as far away from the stormwater pipes as possible while also being within a few meters of the other cherry tree I have planted which I think is a Stella and um, they need to be near each other because they are complementary in terms of their bloom time and cross-pollination so that you actually get some cherries and this poor little lupin cherry has been sitting in its nursery pot now for nearly 12 months since I bought it 
and it just needed to go in the ground so what I wanted to do was first just dig a hole and then get some cardboard and newspaper and try and smother out the grass and bring down some more um, bricks as garden edging and get the shape of the garden bed laid out. By this point the puppies and I were pretty tired and we were running out of daylight hours so I quickly decided to run the mower over the lawn. I've given up catching my um, grass for the compost and I just steal my parents grass clippings. Our grass is just so full of these weeds that have invaded some of the garden beds because it's not a hot composting system and I just don't want to keep dealing with it so I just cut the lawn as low as I could and as I was doing that some storm clouds started to roll in so I left the edging for another time and I actually need to work out how to use an edger because I've just got an electric whippersnipper and I've been given a edger so it is time to work out how to have some nice beautiful crisp garden beds but really there's nothing quite like a freshly tightly mowed grass at lawn to just tidy up the way an area looks. I'm really happy with the way this is coming together. It's been such a big job and I'm just stoked with how it's looking. I hope you guys have enjoyed this day in the garden with us and hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.